Hello everyone, welcome back to the 4Play channel. It's Bella. It's Jace. Before we get into today's video, make sure to leave this video a like. It helps us out a ton. Make sure that you subscribe so you never miss whenever we post a new video. And make sure to leave a comment on any videos you'd like to see from us in the future or any questions that you might have. This video is all about Temptation Resort in Cancun, Mexico. Two real quick notes before we get started. First one, this is going to be a little bit quicker. If you want to hear about this super duper in depth, go to our podcast, which we will have listed right down here below. Also, if you are going to Temptation Desire in the resort, if you book through our links, it helps out a lot. It doesn't cost any extra to you, but we will have those links right on here below as well. So let's get into the video. First, we're going to talk about the demographic. And so Temptation Resort, we feel like, has had the youngest group of people that we've seen in any lifestyle type vacation, lifestyle type place. It's this one and Temptation Cruise. We found that there were a lot of people in their late 20s, early 30s. The bulk we would say is in their mid 30s to early 40s, which still skews younger in general. This resort does allow singles. So we did find that there were a lot of singles, both single men and single women, more single men, but they do have bachelorette parties, bachelor parties. And this resort itself is not considered a swinger lifestyle resort. It is more a spring break for adults, adult playground type of place. And so it's not all swingers. A majority of people we'd say weren't in the lifestyle. It was just a lot of people who were open and fun and looking for something with no kids and a more party atmosphere. The size of the temptation is the biggest resort. There is over 400 rooms there. And it's also a very large property. So it's a really, really big resort. Now we're gonna talk about how it's organized. You have your standard rooms, then some other nice rooms, and then there's the tower rooms. And the tower rooms are at the top of the hotel. They have special access to a different hot tub and little food bar area that you do not have access to unless you're a premier member or you're staying in the tower. We sit in the garden view room, which is one of the standard rooms, but you still have access to the rest of the resort besides that top area. So there is a really, really large pool, and that is where the bulk of people would hang out, I would say. There's a bar there, that's where they have all of the parties, the playmakers do their games there. And it's also nice though, because there is a second smaller pool that is very, very quiet. So if you wanted to get away to feel a bit more relaxed, they have a quiet pool, which they literally call the quiet pool. So that's a really nice option as well. So there's two hot tubs in Temptation. One is at that sky bar, which is the top level, which we personally do not have access to. And then there's another one that's on the main floor where the party happens at night. But really the hot tubs we feel like are not too busy. You saw some people relax in the hot tubs, but there was no party in the hot tubs. A big thing about Temptation is there is no playrooms. We said it is not a lifestyle resort. It's just lifestyle friendly, but unlike the cruise, there's actually no playrooms at all at Temptation. You just have to use your own room if you want a playroom. There's a spa that has a bunch of different massages. They have some sexy massages, couples massages if you're looking for that. There is a really, really nice gym if you want to go to the gym while you're on vacation. And the last thing, there is tons of bars everywhere here. There's bars in the pool, upstairs, downstairs, you name it. There is a ton of bars at this place. There are theme nights every single night. It's going to differ per year. And so just make sure that you check the website so you know what theme is going on. These are just nighttime themes. They didn't have any daytime themes whenever we were there. In general, we feel like the women did dress more up than the men did, but nobody really went completely all out. We feel like some other resorts or other hotel takeovers. People really went out on their costumes and everything. And this one was not as much. The food in general was just okay. We would say it was mediocre. They had a buffet for lunch and breakfast. And then at dinner, they had a Mexican buffet. There were a few other restaurants that you could go to. There was a Italian restaurant and a really cool one that we would recommend is to go to She. You did have to make reservations for that. And that one had live dancing. It was a couple of this dancing was very sexy and you can have your nice dinner while you watch that. There was a seafood restaurant that was really pretty. It was right by the beach. There was a coffee place that you could get. We really liked going there. They had lattes, frappuccinos, and little mini snacks. And there was an Asian restaurant. So this one had sushi and teppanyaki or uh, kind of like Benihana's, that kind of stuff where they did the hibachi in front of you. Lastly, there was a steak restaurant as well that we actually didn't get to go to, but they do have it. During the day, they also had up on the sky bar. This is what the very top of the tower. You have to stay there or be a member and they had different food there as well. There is an alcohol package included with your stay. It doesn't include the very, very top shelf 
off liquor. You do have to pay extra for that or a premium for that, but your drinks are included and all of your other, I mean, the water is there. There's a ton of water bottles. Anytime you needed a water bottle, you can ask for one. They had juice, that kind of stuff. Next, we're talking about accommodations. There's a vast majority of different types of rooms you can get here. So we suggest just going to Temptation's website and looking at whatever room that you think would fit you best. But it's a very sleek, modern type design. It almost feels like a futuristic Ikea type feel. The room's really nice. There's a big bed in there. There's a really nice shower, which doesn't have a shower door, which is interesting, but it's a huge shower. There's a ton of cabinet space. You can store everything in all of the rooms. Overall, it was a sleek design, but we feel like the way that it was presented wasn't the best. The furniture and that stuff looks kind of cheap. The rooms itself weren't like the absolute cleanest. Everything wasn't, it didn't look new or anything like that. The cabinets were really difficult to open. We actually have to call maintenance to come fix ours. So we would say nothing was super duper duper nice when you looked close up, but when you first like walk in and when you look at the pictures, it did look fun, funky. The staff was absolutely incredible, especially the Playmakers. We feel like the Playmakers really made for such an amazing experience at the resort. I think that if the Playmakers weren't there, it wouldn't have been near as fun. There was a ton of them too. There may be like 12 or something like that. And these, they're beautiful to look at. Yeah. And they were so outgoing and fun. They were always dancing getting people talking they would go even at lunch one time they would go and sit with the guests at lunch they would dance with people at night and the games were amazing we're gonna get into the type of activities later but I'm telling you like the playmakers really made it for us and the staff in general like bar staff food staff waiters waitresses all everybody of those were also super super incredible so going off that activities were really really awesome the Playmakers led so many cool games. They had games where people came up and made different shots. They had this one called that was a naked tequila volleyball where people lost article of clothing every time you missed a volleyball shot. There was a Mr. Temptation contest. There was a perfect couple contest. They just had so many games. There was a foam party, which is amazing. And everything, the Playmakers got everyone so involved and they just made it for such a fun atmosphere. And that was one of my favorite things about Temptation was how amazing the activities were made by the playmakers. There's not a ton of other things to really do there besides go to the pool and hang out, but there is a really nice beach. So if you want to, you know, walk on the beach, there's massages, there's things like that. But as a general rule, it's a very party type place and the pool is where most people hung out and they hung out at the party at night. We feel like Temptation had the best shows too. It was really, really good. Every night there was a different theme and that theme matched the dancers and whatever was going on that night. It was super, super fun. One night they did almost a fashion show and they walked out with almost these Victoria's Secret wings and that was really gorgeous and the playmakers were in there too. The show started about 10 o'clock and then whenever the show was over, the playmakers would bring the guests out and then we would all go up on the stage and all dance. And so we felt like that was really important for the playmakers to do that too, because I think if they didn't, then nobody would want to go up on the stage and dance. Music wise, I think this is my favorite music I've ever had at any sort of lifestyle event. It was such a good mix. There really wasn't anything that they didn't play. And that's why I thought was so great. There was EDM, there was hip hop, there was pop, there was R&B, like- Ringtone, yeah. Yeah, older music. Like they had so many different things and it was such a good variety of music that I felt like everyone enjoyed dancing. So I was extremely impressed by the music at Temptation. They also played really good music during the day as well. So even at the pool, even if there wasn't a pool party, like not a phone party going on, there was always good music playing then too. So miscellaneous things, one big, thing is to note is that it is topless only. It's optional. You obviously do not have to be topless, but at some of the other resorts, you can be completely naked. Temptation is topless only. Another thing that we did not participate in, it's an extra charge. You go on a thing called a boobs cruise and we just didn't have time this time, but it's supposedly a really fun thing where you meet some of the more wild party people. You don't actually have to be a temptation to go. So if you do go on the boobs cruise, you might not be coming back with all of you that are temptation. You might be people going to other resorts or people just staying in Cancun at the time. Everybody gets wristbands whenever or bracelets whenever you first check in and that just depends on where you are staying. At the restaurants, this is one of the negatives that I personally found. There were just a lot of flies everywhere. And I know I like, can't help it, especially if people are coming in and out of the pool, going into the restaurant and stuff like that whenever you're getting food. This is at the buffet area. And I know I like, can't really help it, but we I felt like there were quite a bit of flies all around. 
which I didn't love. We are in Mexico though. I know, yeah. <laughs> in a lush climate, so yeah. it is understandable for sure. One big thing to note was we were at Temptation Monday through Wednesday, and it was not very busy in comparison to what we heard. Thursday through Saturday is what we heard is the biggest. Somebody said that we were there. They said they were there on Saturday. They said that was at full capacity. They said Monday through Wednesday to them felt like almost 25% of what's there on Saturday. So if you are looking for a busier crowd, we definitely recommend to go on a weekend. With that, seating by the pool is a little bit difficult to find chairs. So we saw some people just get up early so they can make sure they get a chair. And again, we were there Monday through Wednesday and it was kind of hard to get a chair. So especially on the weekends, it would be even more hard. And then the whole single male situation, I think, if you're going in as a lifestyle couple and you're wanting to find more like swinger lifestyle friends, do be aware that there are a lot of single guys out there and a lot of bulls. And so if that is something that might deter you, just keep that in mind. Also note, most of these single males do not feel like lifestyle single males to me. And so they do not have the same amount of understanding and respectfulness. Or etiquette, like yeah. they don't know the lifestyle etiquette. And so, so that is something to be aware of whenever you are going. We didn't have any issues, but there was just was several conversations that were kind of uncomfortable from uh, single guys that just didn't understand the etiquette of how to approach people. We feel like even with the couples that we found there, since a majority of people weren't lifestyle in general, we felt like there wasn't that kind of unspoken lifestyle etiquette. Not that we felt like we were uncomfortable or we didn't feel attacked or anything, but it just, the vibe was completely different at Temptation Resort versus a lifestyle actual event. So in conclusion, it's a really good time and especially if you're looking for the party. If you're trying to just party and go hard partying, Temptation is your place to be. But kind of like Bella said, it is not lifestyle. It's lifestyle friendly. And so if you're really looking for the lifestyle aspect, it's not as great as some of the other options. We said for us, if we could have a lifestyle takeover at Temptation, it would be our favorite thing since it's a mix of the party plus the like-mindedness of all the lifestyle people. So those are a couple things that we really noticed heavily. We felt like the couples that we did meet who were lifestyle were more in the late 30s, early 40s age range versus in their 20s. And then if you are going to book Temptation because of how party it is, I don't think that I would book more than three to four nights. I yeah. think if you were to do more than that, it would be way too much. And so keep that in mind, you might not want to do a five to seven night stay at Temptation Resort. Unless you're gonna take some days off, which they have the quiet pool, so maybe you go for three days and you party hard, take a day off, then go back at it again. I think that would work, but if you're planning on partying every day, I totally agree, three to four nights is probably enough. So overall, we had a really, really nice experience. We'll definitely go back at some point. We're super thankful we got to go, but hopefully that helps you guys understand a little bit more of what's going on. We also have a vlog coming out. It should be out next week when this comes out. That's some behind the scenes so you can get a little bit of idea of what some of the stuff looks like and what our experience was like. So that also, if you guys wanna hear an in-depth, in-depth, go to our podcast, which we'll have a link right down here below. But thank you guys so much for watching. We really, really appreciate it. Make sure you leave this video a like, subscribe so you never really post a video. And then if you have any questions about this resort or anything else, let us know and we will talk to you guys in the next one.